Welcome to the next lecture of our Path to AI QA Engineering mini series that we have been talking about. And today in this uh, video, we are going to talk about code graded evaluation. If you remember, we have been talking about the AI QA engineering for past few videos in this particular series. And this video is exclusively going to talk about the code graded evaluation. If you remember, we were talking about the different types of evaluation even in our last lecture, like human based evaluation. And then we also have got something called as code based evaluation and then LLM based evaluation. Today, we are going to talk about the second one, the code based evaluation, and we will see how we can achieve that using the code. Because if you remember in our last lecture, while we were working with the human based evaluation, we saw how we can also use not just the manual evaluation uh, with the large language model, but also using a tool which is available in the uh, anthropic cloud. Uh, the console where you can uh, write all the uh, all the prompts and then you can also do the evaluations uh, something like this and it will help you do a lot of different evaluations with different kinds of language that that we try to input and then we got the output and then we can do the human grading over here like poor fair good and very good things of that nature and then we also saw how it helps us to write a multiple different um, evaluation with the same prompt that we actually gave so that was kind of insane that how easily we can achieve everything using the tool which is already available for free of cost in the anthropic cloud uh, api console and now we are going to go a level further because as you can see the problem with these kind of evaluations like human graded evaluation is that you as a human being have to not only just write the prompts but also do the evaluation manually even though we have an option called generate test case something like this you just automatically um, get the help of large language model to generate the uh, scenarios for you but still you have to manually go and grade that which is kind of pain rather we as a human test engineer who know how to write the code and also get the help of the large language model to do the evaluation for us we can do everything and then understand how we can uh, evaluate everything in one single shot instead of us doing everything manually. So while I say we are going to do everything via the code, instead of doing everything manually, we are going to write some Python code to do this kind of evaluation. But again, in order for you to evaluate a large language model, you need to be clear on what exactly that you are going to be testing with your large language model. Are you going to test the, the features that is something that is very specific to your domain? or maybe something which is very specific to your RAG application or the input that you have already injected in your large language model, you have to be very clear on the question that you are going to be asking. That's when you can obtain the result or the golden answer that you can get from the large language model. So you can have a question that you're going to be asking like an input question or a prompt, and then you can have a golden answer or the golden data which is returned from the large language model. So we call this golden data set because that data set can be used for evaluation purpose. I have exclusively covered those kind of information in my course, test AI and LLM app with the deep eval ragas uh, and more using Olama and local large language model over here, where I have told like how you can work with the uh, local large language model uh, and what is the types of different types of evaluation we have got like human graded evaluation and different matrices and how we can uh, do the the evaluation using deep eval tool because this is going to be using the large language model as an, a judge to do the evaluation and also we will see how we can create data sets like golden data sets and then perform these operation uh, using uh, in the in the ragas it's also been covered over here and also how you can test the ai agents and drag applications and also use the hugging face evaluator to do all these operation it's all covered in this particular course already but this lecture as i told you is going to be like a small mini series we are covering just like a high level details of it but if you really want to go more deep this course is the place where you have to go with well as i said we are going to see how we can convert this entire manual operation that we were doing before into a code so in order to do that i have written a code or i have always shown this particular code for the browser use testing uh, in my uh, youtube series which is already available in the in the description below you can go ahead and watch there but uh over here, I'm just going to use the same source code and uh, I'm just going to create a, a notebook like the Jupyter notebook to start writing the code because it's going to be very easy for you to follow along. Well, as that said, I'm going to create a new Jupyter notebook. And once again, to set up the Jupyter notebook and set up the, um, the Python environments and do things, 
it's all there in the course so i'm not going to spend more times on doing all of these over here because that's going to ruin this this particular video itself so i'm just going to leave that as it is and now i'm going to start writing the code so the first thing is i'm going to create an evaluation data set so this is the data set that we have got i'm going to say this is the animal statement and this is the golden answer so the animal statement is the animal is a sparrow uh, and then the answer is going to be two meaning it has got two legs and while I say an animal is penguin, the golden answer is two because it has also got two legs. And there is a hypothetical question. So I'm going to say the eagle lost a leg, but then magically grew back the leg he lost. And the mysterious extra leg is on the top of that. So the golden answer is three for that. And then the animal is ostrich. The answer is two. And he said, this is more funny. The animal is a snake disguised as a bird. So the, the answer is zero because the snake has got no legs, right? So the, the answer is zero here. And see, even this one, the animal is a mythical bird with six legs and the golden answer is six over there. Look at that. Uh, and I'm also uh, saying the animal uh, is a two-headed, four-legged mythical bird and the golden answer is four. So this is how I'm just, you know, just asking some questions over here to confuse the local large language model or the large language model by general. So these are the evaluation data set that I have got. So the moment I hit this run, you see that because we are running everything in the Jupyter Notebook, it's all just gonna be executed for you over there, which is amazing. So you can keep track of things. So you can now just go hit this and just do an eval data. And if you just run it, you're gonna see the same exact data which is stored in this particular array which is quite amazing so this is how you use this uh, jupyter notebook it is quite amazing i have used the same exact idea in all my courses so that you can have a clear understanding while you learn them and once i have this particular uh, evaluation data i'm going to write a simple uh, prompt over here i'm gonna just going to say build input prompt uh, and over here i'm going to say you will be provided a statement about an animal and your job is to determine how many legs that animal has and here is the animal statement. So I'm going to give the animal statement, which is going to be the input that I'm going to passing in. And this is going to be the prompt, like how you do it. And then I'm going to say, how many legs does the animal have? Please respond with a number. See, that's what it's, the job is for the large language model. And I'm going to set the role and the user, um, the role is going to be the user and the content is going to be the user content. This is pretty much exactly similar to how we did while we were writing the prompt over here, as you remember in our last lecture. This is the same idea that I have done over here as well. So I'm going to just execute this code. You see that the build input um, method is going to be executed. Now I can call this method and I can start using this particular method and see how it actually looks like while I give any input uh, to this particular uh, method. So I'm going to say uh, build input prompt and I need to pass the animal statement over here. The animal statement is sitting in the eval data. So I can just say eval data of zero of animal statement, something like this. And if I hit run, you see that it is gonna set the role as user. The content is gonna be this one, which we have passed. And here is the animal statement. And the animal statement is gonna be, this animal is a sparrow, uh, sparrow, sorry. And then it's gonna say, how many leg does the animal have? Please respond to the number, right? That is the, that is the, that is the, um, uh, prompt that I'm going to pass in. So once I have this input prompt, then I can do a lot of things, right? I can use the same uh, prompt and then I can pass it to a large language model and I can then get the response back. And now the question is, where is the large language model? How do I pass the data to a large language model? Well, for that, I have already written the code. So I'm just going to copy paste that code uh, instead over here which is going to be this one, as you can see. So I'm just gonna use the OpenAI uh, library to do that, uh, which is going to perform this operation for me. I'm just gonna execute it. Uh, and now once we have this particular code, we can use this get completion uh, method to perform this operation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, get the output, uh, which is going to be the get completion of the uh, build input prompt. Uh, which is this one and then i'm going to pass this first, first statement that i have passed in over here the same code i have passed it over here but i'm passing it inside the get completion method so that i can get an output out from it i can also print the output and see what's going to happen and look at that it's now going to the large language model which is the uh, open uh, ai's model over here because i've also configured everything uh, within my env file that's the reason why the evaluation is happening so basically uh, it is just working as expected for me uh, over there so things are pretty good uh, and now because it is giving me the output as two which is amazing uh, 
so the, the prompt is working fine. Now I have to pass all the data and I need to evaluate every single data in this particular data set. So I need to write some, uh, something like a loop to perform this operation. So in order to do the looping, I'm just gonna put the code over here. So I'm gonna just say outputs is equal to, um, look at that, it's already generating the code for me, which is quite amazing. And also it's generating some accuracy code for me. It's, it's all written by the cursor. So I'm not really writing any of the codes. I'm just going to ignore it for now. So all I have done, uh, done over here, and uh, not me done, doing that. So all this cursor is doing it for me is like, it's going to just do the same exact thing. But over here, you can see that the eval data is now being looped uh over here one by one so that it can print all the outputs so now you can see that now it is looping through all the data in the evaluation data set and now it is printing that value for me over here which is quite amazing and i don't really have to write even a single line of code so the evaluation is keep happening over here it's been 14 seconds let's give it some more time and there we go. So we got some responses over here. So two, two, three, two, four, two, two, zero. So I think it's the the snake thingy. Uh, and then six, two, three, four. So I think it is gonna match what we have. See, six, three, four. So it's gonna be uh, six, two, three, four. So there is some error going on. I think we need to figure out what exactly is that. So for that, we need to write the code a bit more better so that we can really read and understand how the outputs are gonna look like. So I'm going to just say for uh, output in the uh, outputs uh, over here. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to zip the outputs over here and the evaluate apps. I'm going to pass it in uh, to, the, uh, to the zip method so that I can get both the outputs one by one uh, in, the, um, in the tuple. And then I can pass it uh, each uh, values in the statement, like animal statement and the output and then the golden answer as well so that we can compare how the outputs are going to look like. So if I run this time over here, you will notice that the, the animal is a sparrow, the output is two, the golden output is two as well. Uh, and then even this one is correct. So if I just make a scrollable element, looks like everything is working fine. See that the animal is um, the animal is snake disguised as bird, which is uh, zero and the uh, golden output is zero as well. So everything looks perfect. So which means there is a hundred percentage accuracy this time because we are using the large language model, which is from the open AI. Now for the twist, if I use different large language model, which is running within my local machine, this may not work as expected. I've tried it before, it did not work. So just to prove the point, like how that is gonna happen, I'm gonna show you the code, which I've already covered in my Langchain course. I'm just gonna go and grab that code, uh, which is sitting over here. I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna run this guy, see that? I'm just gonna use my local large language model using the Langchain Olama uh, class. Uh, sorry, Chat Llama, uh, Chat Olama class with the Langchain Olama package. Uh, and now I'm going to run the exact same thing one by one. See, so this time it is using my local large language model, not using the Olama there. So the time may be different. There we go. Uh, and it's gonna be executed and Look at that, the eagle lost a leg, but the magically grew back the leg he lost uh, with the extra leg on the top of that. The output is four, but the golden answer is three. So we are expecting the answer to be three, but this time it has given us the answer as um, four, so which is wrong, right? And if I just see the other answers, looks like the other answers are quite right, but the large language model has failed with uh, one answer there, which is crazy. So now if I go change the language model a bit, maybe I'm just gonna say Olama list to see what other language model I have got. So this is the smallest model I had, uh, which is this one. So if I change the model to maybe Llama 3.2 latest model, maybe the things might be different this time. So we'll just try to see if that's the case. Uh, okay, I'm gonna save it. Um, uh, let me change the kernel because that is changed as well. I'm gonna run all. So I'm just gonna execute all of them together. So this is the power of the notebook because you can do everything from the start completely. Um, there we go, it's executing. And we got the output this time. So look at that. 
uh, now because I'm using a different model the Llama 3.2 latest model now it is doing a quite a lot of different things over here so you look at that so if I just gonna see here uh, the, the animal is a duck the output is simple straightforward task so the duck have two legs so it's just outputting some more extra information this time and also saying that based on the statement I would conclude that the animal is four legged and the fact is this 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 and the answer is uh, three uh, and See, now it's giving a quite a lot of different answer this time, uh, but not every answer is correct because see the Kiwi has four legs it says, uh, but the golden answer is two. So the local large language model always has got a problem regardless uh, in this case, we can clearly see that. But now in order to fix this same code with our local large language model as well, not like every time we can think of that it, it's a problem with the uh, large language model itself. So how do we actually fix that? Well, I'm going to use the same large language model that I was using before. I'm going to paste that over here. Um, just going to run it. And now I'm going to fine tune our prompt this time a bit. So instead of using this prompt, I'm just going to give the language model an ability to go and think before answering the questions. So just first think, put it on a think statement and then add based on what extra question which has been asked over there that is how i'm going to change the prompt this time so i'm going to say this one over here so i'm going to say you'll be provided the statement it's going to remain exactly the same but i'm going to say how many legs does the animal have start by reasoning about the number of legs on the uh, legs the animal has think step by step inside of the thinking tag so i'm going to give an ability to go and think before you answer it and then output the final answer inside the answers tag and inside the answer tag written there's just the number of legs in the integer and nothing else see i have now fine-tuned the prompt to give the response a bit more better that's what i told you in the first lecture of this particular uh, series i told you that this uh, prompt engineering is an art rather a program or just like a type in that how you do because prompting is super important while you do everything including evaluation of your large language model and now so, since i have modified the prompt a bit you will notice that the things will start changing even with our local large language model so i will show you what i really mean about that so if i'm going to run the same code with the same large language model that we were using before you should see the answer is going to be a bit more different this time see it is going to output that let me just wait until the execution is fully complete look at that there is a thinking tag all the time over there let that be there we don't have to worry about it but now you see the outputs over here see the output says the for the sparrow it's two even for the penguin it is two for the a leg which was last and extra on the top you remember it was showing us four earlier but now it has got three which is correct so the answer is matching as expected uh, and similarly you can see that the animal is ostrich it is giving the correct answer uh, which is all perfect uh, and then you can see that all the answers are working as expected for us over here uh, and there is no error so far so we have got like 100 percent accuracy this time because we have fine-tuned our uh, prompt to answer the correct way the large language model should so this is how we can fine tune our prompt to get the expected answer that we're looking for and that is the power of the uh, of the evaluation of your large language model with the power of prompt engineering and that is what we are we have been talking about in this entire series and the power of the prompting so far in the evaluation of your large language model so now that we have covered how you can do the human evaluation manually and also using the tool like the workbench and also how we can do with the code like what this one is and then we're going to see how we can do the exact same thing with the large language model as a judge and that's something we have covered exclusively in the course but i will cover a bit in our next lecture so that you can understand how evaluation is done in industry in enterprise grade to make things happen once again thank you so much for watching this video catch you in the next one